Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of American Truck Simulator. Today I'm currently in Phoenix, Arizona. It's about 4 in the morning and uh, we do have a run that we're going to want to take but it's currently 40 miles away. So I decided let's go ahead and bobtail over there and uh, we'll check up on the load that we're going to take to uh, I believe no, no Scalas or something like that. Southern, it's very Southern Arizona. Um, but we'll go ahead and try to bobtail over there to, I believe we're going to 42 print is, uh, where we're going to be heading to pick up this trailer that we're going to be driving. I'm not sure what the load is yet, so we'll figure all that out when we get there. But, uh, it's going to be a relatively short trip, only about 200 miles, so it shouldn't be anything too crazy. Just a quick little journey, but the bobtailing on top of that should, uh, should do us some good, and we haven't bobtailed in uh forever actually in a long time i don't think um you don't really ever get the chance to bobtail you kind of just have a uh a run where you want to go you can always find one it seems whoop that was a bad idea trying to go into fifth and i went into first that's terrible how oh, you blow a truck up right there um but yeah so i was reading through the comments on the last not the most not the last video but the last two videos because i do them in groups of two when i record a session and, uh, ooh, excuse me. And, uh, I talked about my knee injury in one of those, uh, and I talked about an air conditioner in the other one. Oops, I just hit a button, and I think that is, I'm not sure what this button does, but I'm not going to hit it again. Um, so, uh, you know, a lot of you also had knee injuries that took you out of sports. And, you know, I was reading the comments, and I'm thinking... Wow, it's amazing that other people... It's not amazing. It, it sucks that other people have had the same injury as me, but it's amazing because it, when something like that happens, when you get injured out of a sport, um, you kind of just go, what What happened? Why did I have an issue and everybody else is fine and can continue to do this? Why, why, why am I the one that had to suffer this? Um... That's kind of what you think when you when it first happens. You have a little bit of like, what's whoa 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 why? Um, but after reading so many comments, I, I didn't even think that that. I mean, knee injuries are one of the most common injuries, um, so it makes sense that, that there's a lot of people out there with the same thing. But you know, when I was reading it, I was going, man, I'm not alone. There's a lot of people out there that felt the same exact way, and in a way that made me feel better. I have a little connection between some people that also have had a terrible thing happen uh, in their lives, so. It's not a good thing that people are also getting injured, but yeah, it makes me feel a little bit better that I'm not the only one out there that has some sort of injury. So, discovered a new recruitment agency, which is good because I also didn't realize we have $244,000. We have a ton of money, and I don't really know where it all came from. <laughs> I know I've been doing a lot of runs lately, and I haven't been spending a lot of money, and I have one driver, unless all of a sudden he's really started blowing up. Um, I just, I don't know. We have a ton of money. Um, but anyway, uh, we need to spend it. Uh, anyway, so I also noticed on the other video I was talking about my air conditioner. And, um, I got a lot of suggestions on air conditioners from you guys, like, which ones to use. And I actually have a lot of them bookmarked. So I do, whoops, I'm entering the wrong way. Damn it. So I actually bookmarked a lot of them. I'm still looking into trying to find the best one. The one that I'm looking at currently... Um, oh, hold on real quick. Let's just go ahead and pick up our trailer. Let's go ahead and pick up our trailer. So, what I'm looking at currently, what I have, what's kind of catch my eye is the, uh, it's a Honeywell, like, 10,000 BTU. The reason why it's catching my eye is, uh, it's advertised as be, to be as quiet as a 55 decibel, 55 decibels, which is, like, a little conversation. Um, I don't know what my current AC decibel is at, but it's definitely not 55. It's probably 100. It's super loud. Um, so if anybody has, like, the Honeywell uh, portable air conditioner, please let me know. And the reason why I'm looking for a portable, let me do a pull test real quick. Yep, you can hear them scraping. Maybe we can even see the landing gear go up this time. We didn't really get to watch it last time. Here we go. Ooh, get the... Stupid box. Damn it. Sorry. <laughs> I tried. Alright, so real quick, let's go ahead and look at our, um... 
our load. We are hauling 25,000 pounds of curtain to, to Nogales. I'm sorry, I'm extremely white and I have a terrible hard time pronouncing anything with that isn't white. <laughs> that is the worst. All right, so it's 199 miles away, five hours and 11 minutes. And uh, maybe on the way I can learn how to say this. Uh, maybe not, actually. Hmm. Okay, so anyway, let's go. So, um, the reason why I'm looking for a portable air conditioner compared to a uh, window air conditioner is the window that it would need to go out of is uh, two stories. So, I could put a window air conditioner on, you know, but I would need to either access the outside, which would be sketchy, because uh, I'm not a big fan of heights, uh, <laughs> or I would need to put some sort of plate from the inside, which again would also be sketchy because I don't know how you would do that without with only accessing the inside of the window um, so that's the reason why I'm kind of looking for something that's in a portable just because it would be easier for me to just kind of set it up next to the window and then just have the ventilation going right out the window I'm turning this thing like it's a huge 53 foot I'm starting to realize that it's super short it's like a 48 if that I think it's a 48 yeah I'm turning this thing like it's massive and it's not at all um, so yeah, if anybody has the Honeywell, can you, I mean, I don't know how loud it is, you know, 55 decibels, that's just a determination. So if you can give an example, that'd be great. Cause I'm still on the fence. I, lots of money, you know, you don't want to really throw around a couple hundred dollars on something that isn't going to work well. I don't want to spend $300 on an AC just to find out that it's really loud or almost as loud as my old one and it wasn't really that big of a deal. But then again, my old one is actually leaking, so <laughs> I guess it doesn't really matter. But anyway, I would just like to thank you guys for all your inputs um, for air conditioners and stuff like that and trying to make me comfortable because um, I hate the heat a lot and you guys know it more than anybody because you hear it all the time. Uh, and you see the effects of the heat on me all the time, so... <laughs> I'm gonna see what I can do, because I would love one that I can run while I'm recording, one that's in the, uh... One that's in the actual room, not just coming through a little vent. That'd be really nice. I believe we're gonna have to take this little exit off-ramp. Not really sure. So, yeah, um... Camp Verde... And, uh, Flagstaff, I believe it was. Going... Are we going south? I don't, oh, yeah, I think we... Nope, we're going east on the 10. And then we'll be going south on the 10. Well, that's not right. Is that right? That might be right. I don't know. Somebody will know these highways. I don't. Yeah, we're going east 10 right now. And then I guess it turns in and starts going south. So then we'll go south 10. Um, but it shouldn't be that long of a trip. We should be there relatively soon. This trailer doesn't seem like it's going to be too much of a hassle. Uh, am I going show low or no? No, 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 I'm not. We're going to get one over. Because I'm going to go... This is what it's like being a tourist. If you live in Arizona and you drive highways that look like this, first of all, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> second of all, uh, this is what a tourist feels like behind the wheels. So if you see a, a rental car and some people that look very confused, give them a break. Because <laughs> this road system is just, it's very interesting. Very interesting. I mean, I guess they know which way traffic flows and it makes sense why the 10 is now fa facing south because it straight on turns. So, I don't know. Maybe they have it worked out out there. Maybe they know what they're doing out there in Arizona. I've never been there, so I wouldn't be able to tell. I'm still also wondering about this Taurus police car that has an all-blue light bar. It just says police on the side, and it's black. It looks like the uh, the one they revealed when they revealed the new police interceptor, like the, that little basic paint job that just said police that was stretched all the way down to the bottom. You know which one I'm talking about. It seems like it's just that one with a blue light bar, and I don't know. I've seen it all over Arizona. And um, I'm not sure who it is. I'm not sure what agency it is. I, I might need a new police mod. One of the ones that adds the police vehicles. Because I'm getting CHP cars in Arizona still, which is strange. Um, also, I believe that the one that is driving around is... Um, I don't know.
don't know. I, I think some people, I don't know. Uh, what is that Arizona Highway Patrol? The white with the blue? I believe it is, right? I don't know. But then I'm getting these other random Tauruses that I have no idea who, what department those are for. This is some craziness. Where am I right now? <laughs> this highway system is nuts. There's trucks flying all around. Oh, I got to really stop at that truck stop one day. This is that truck stop that's all by itself on the top of the hill. Oh, yeah, I got to stop at that. That's got to be cool. And honestly, I'm kind of bummed that MHA doesn't... Well, okay, it does work and it has been updated, kind of. Well, actually, no, some people are saying it still doesn't even work. Uh, it needs a patch, but um, it just sucks that it's just not an easy thing to get anymore. Um, it's not, you know, something that is just readily available, which is, is annoying. Um, because it was a really nice mod. I really enjoyed seeing the things that it did to the game. It added a lot, especially at the truck stops and, and way stations and everything. It made it feel alive and awesome. And it sucks that they're not going to be there anymore. Or at least for a while, MHA won't be around um, until that situation gets figured out or until it starts working or... Well, I don't I don't know. But I, I, I don't like when somebody makes a, something and it becomes very popular and then they strong arm people into doing something that they would like. Like, sign up here and then you can get it. Or it's like, and it's like, no. If you already had it out there for free, continuing, continue to bring it out there for free. I don't know. That starts a whole conversation where there's two sides to every story and I understand that people are out there trying to survive and trying to live and trying to make it and you know, I can't hate people for doing that. I just hate that it, it, you know, turns that way sometimes. It's something that starts off free for fun for the community can turn into gimme, gimme, gimme. Um, which is never enjoyable. So, alright, we're taking this super strange exit. <laughs> not, even not even really an exit. It's just kind of a, a the 10 keeps going. The 10 is a very twisty highway, I'm starting to learn. And all these little turnoffs are crazy. Because um, I'm pretty sure this is, um, this is near Mexico. Mexico. My terrible Jesse Ventura impression. Um, yeah, I don't know. I wonder what it's going to look like. Getting a little greener, feels like. Or a little, maybe a little hillier. I'm going to get over in the right lane. I have no right or need to be in the left lane. I'm also very thirsty. <laughs> and I have a drink here, so why don't I just drink it? Uh, sometimes I get caught, so caught up in what I'm doing and what I'm saying, I always forget that I have a drink or you know, a good example is I always, um, I'm not a big eater during the day because I wake up and I start working. Um on work days, of course. I don't start working on my days off. Nogales, we're here. That's not how you say that still. And I'm still extremely white, so I apologize. Um, so, yeah, I, I typically I wake up and I work, and I don't eat breakfast. So I'll actually go all day. Like, a, a good example is today, I didn't eat until about, mm, God, what was it, about 8? Maybe even 8.30 p.m., and I was up at... Uh, like a little before 11. So I went about nine hours without eating all day. I had a cup of coffee, and um, that's about it. That's all I had, actually, was a cup of coffee. Um, Yeah, that happens. That's just kind of my routine. That's what I do. I know it's not good for you at all, but I don't know. I just get too wrapped up in what I'm doing, and I can't, and I just forget about it, and... Next thing I know, it's super late and it's dark, and I'm like, oh, cool, I'm done with work. And the second I'm, like, done with my work, and I'm like, okay, I got everything I needed to get done, or, you know, got this, or whatever. As soon as that happens, my stomach goes, boom, eating itself. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm extremely hungry. <laughs> that's kind of what happens. That's the that's a normal day ritual, is I'm like, I'm not hungry all day. And then as soon as I finish my work, I'm like, oh, my God, I didn't realize how hungry I was. Nope. Needs to come over more. Nope. Fuck that up. I fucked it up. There we go. We're gonna get a nice lineup. 
Put the flashers on too, since we didn't do it last time, and I almost didn't do it this time. There we go. Boom. Now we can turn the flashers back off. They were on for 12 milliseconds, so it was totally not worth it at all. Look at that. Kodiak Express Digital Solutions. Right? Is that what it is? Yes. Digital Solutions. Pretty nice trailer. Not bad. Go ahead and drop it. Oh, this time we can watch the landing gear. Oh, come on, box. Damn, box. All right, we want 194 miles, 3 hours and 23 minutes, and we got $4,200 and 278 XP. Not really getting any anywhere with the levels with these very short trips, but they are a lot of fun. You get, you do get to see a lot of uh, Arizona, so um, we still have a little bit to discover. We haven't been to uh, Sholo, uh, San Simon... Uh, Sierra Vista, Yuma, all these places that I'm going to also butcher with the names. Um, there's also some new cities in uh, uh, California. Oakdale, I've discovered. I don't know why every time the game updates, I undiscover Oakdale. That just happens. Uh, and then there's uh, Hornbrook and uh, Ukiah. So... We're gonna have to check those out. Maybe we can head up to Ukiah because this whole area, that's all new. And I want to see what this looks like, especially from San Francisco to San Rafael. I want to see all this area. So we might have to head back up that way, but I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. Remember to check the description for all the mods I'm using in this video. Also remember to hit the like button. It really does help me out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.